I am Dr. Mercy Paul Selvan, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, deemed to be university. In this session, we are going to see about CPU scheduling algorithms. What is CPU scheduling algorithm? Scheduling is a task of assigning CPU to one of the process waiting in the ready queue. There would be n number of processes waiting in the ready queue in real time. Now, scheduler job is to assign CPU to one of this particular process and it cannot be done randomly. So, we need to follow some pattern. Those are called as CPU scheduling algorithms. And there are four basic algorithms which we are going to cover now. First, the simplest algorithm is FCFS, first come, first serve. Second algorithm is SJF, stands for shortest job first. And the third algorithm is round robin algorithm. And the final algorithm is priority scheduling algorithm. Let us see first algorithm, the simplest algorithm, FCFS algorithm. That is first come, first serve, right? And we have three processes, for example, P1, P2 and P3. The burst time correspondingly 5 millisecond, 2 millisecond, 7 millisecond. Burst time is nothing but the time taken to complete the job. And waiting time is the time, how long each and every process is waiting to get the CPU is called as waiting time. And turnaround time is the summation of burst time and waiting time. Now let us see, first process waiting time is 5 millisecond, P2 2 millisecond, P3 7 millisecond. I can put, I can represent this in a grand chart. Now in this chart we will see P1 is getting the CPU at 0 to second millisecond and it will be having the CPU for 5 millisecond. So, P1 will not wait at all for getting the CPU. So, the corresponding waiting time for P1 is 0 and P2 has to wait for 5 millisecond uh, so that the P1 will be should be completing the job till that time P2 must wait. So, P2 should wait until P1 completes the job that is 5 milliseconds and P3 has to wait for P1 to complete the task and P2 complete the task. Together it should be waiting for 7 milliseconds. Now we need to calculate turnaround time. The summation of burst time and waiting time makes your turnaround time as I mentioned al already. So 5 plus 0 is equal to 5 millisecond is the turnaround time for P1 and 2 plus 5 7 millisecond is the turnaround time for P2, 7 and 7 put together 14 milliseconds for P3. Now we need to calculate the average waiting time for the entire thing. So average waiting time is equal to 0, first waiting time, process waiting time, second process waiting time, third process waiting time and we have to divide it by the number of processes. So we are getting 0 plus 5 plus 7 divided by 3 is equal to 4 milliseconds. So in average, Every process would wait 4 millisecond. Average turnaround time, similarly we need to calculate the average of this particular matrix. So, we will having, we'll be having 8.6 millisecond as its turnaround time. Second algorithm is shortest job first algorithm. According to this algorithm, whichever process is having the least burst time will get the CPU first. So, accordingly, P2 is having least burst time, 2 millisecond. So, it will get the CPU first. After the P2 task gets over, P1 is having the next least burst time. So, after P2 gets completed, P1 will get the CPU. Finally, P3 will get the CPU. Accordingly, your waiting time will be changed. Now, in the gun chart, when I represent, P2 starts with 0th millisecond and it completes the task for 2 millisecond. Once it is over, P1 after 2 millisecond, P1 takes the CPU and it will be for 5 second with the CPU. Then P3 has to wait until P2 to get over and P1 to get over. So, it should be waiting for 7 milliseconds. Now, we need to calculate waiting time. 0, P2 is waiting for 0 milliseconds. P1 is waiting for P2 to complete. So, 2 millisecond, P3 is waiting for P2 to complete and P1 to complete intuitively 7, 
2 and 5. So, 7 milliseconds P3 has to wait. So, when you calculate average waiting time as we have done earlier, 0 plus 2 plus 7 divided by 3 equal to 3 milliseconds. Similarly, turnaround time average we need to calculate 2 plus 7 plus 14, 7.6 milliseconds. So, when I compare FCFS, SGF will always have lesser wait average waiting time. Now, we are going to see round robin algorithm. For round robin algorithm, we have a time slice metric. Say for example, we have 3 millisecond as time slice. In this algorithm, as per the time slice, each process will be given a CPU for this particular time limit. Once the task is over or not, the CPU will be forcefully taken back. Now, we will see this example, three processes as usual we have P1, P2 and P3, burst time 5 millisecond, 2 milliseconds, 7 milliseconds. And now, the Gantt chart, when, you ex when I explain, first for, for first 3 seconds, P1 will take the CPU. So, it starts with 0 millisecond. Now, for 3 milliseconds, P1 will get the CPU. Actually, its burst time is 5 millisecond, but only for the given time slice, CPU will be allocated to P1. After 3 seconds, whether the task is over or not, P2, P, I mean, CPU will be taken back from P1. Now, P2 would be waiting in the queue, so CPU will be allotted to P2. Now, actual burst time for P2 is 2 millisecond. Now, CPU will be given to process P2 for 2 milliseconds only, even though time slice is 3 milliseconds because P2 requires only 2 millisecond job to complete its job. Now, after 2 millisecond, at 5th millisecond, P3 will get the CPU. Now, according to time slice 3 milliseconds, it will be given a CPU, CPU will be given to process P3 and for 3 millisecond till 8th millisecond, P3 will get the CPU. Respectively, we have 2 millisecond pending job, this is over and for P3, 3 millisecond job and I mean put together 4 millisecond job is pending. Now, again in rotation, CPU will be given back. So, again P1 will get the CPU again. The pending burst time is 2 milliseconds. So, for 2 milliseconds P1 will get the CPU later. P2 is not in the scenario. P3 gets the CPU for 3 milliseconds. Again, nobody is there in the scenario. So, again P3 will get the CPU for 1 millisecond. Now, we are going to calculate waiting time accordingly. How long it was waiting? When you see the Gantt chart, P1, when you see from here, rightmost, P1 actually as per the Gantt chart, P1 was waiting for 8 milliseconds. But this particular slot should not be considered as waiting time since P1 is enjoying the CPU. So, now these 3 milliseconds should be subtracted by from 8. So, you will be getting 5 milliseconds as waiting time for P1. Similarly, when you take P2, rightmost, when you take P2, according to the chart, P2 was waiting for 3 milliseconds. Right? So, it is waiting for 3 milliseconds. And for P3, if you come across, according to the chart, it was waiting for 10 milliseconds to get the CPU. But this 3 seconds should not be considered as its waiting time since it was enjoying the CPU. So, these 3 seconds should be subtracted from 10. 10, min 10 minus 3 is equal to 7 milliseconds is the waiting time for P3. So, when you calculate average waiting time, you will be getting 5 milliseconds. Turnaround time is the summation of burst time and waiting time. So, 10 millisecond, 5 millisecond, 14 millisecond are the respective turnaround time for all the processes. When you calculate average turnaround time, 10 plus 5 plus 14 is divided by 3 is equal to 9.6 milliseconds. And the last basic algorithm is priority scheduling algorithm. We have a similar example, same example P1, P2 and P3 having its own burst time respectively and here we also have one more metric called priority in the sense according to the priority CPU will be given to the process. 
Now, it is denoted as numbers. The lesser the number, the higher the priority in general. So, according to this example, P3 will be having the highest priority. Then, P2 is having the next priority and P1 is having the last priority. So, accordingly, you have to give the CPU to the process. Now, when you represent in a Gantt chart, you will be uh, able to make it out. P3 will get CPU immediately. So, 0 to second P3 has got the CPU because it has got the first priority. So, for 7 millisecond, P3 will be given a CPU. After 7th second, next priority should be given to process P2. So, P2 gets the CPU for 2 millisecond. After completing, P1 will be having the CPU. Then it will be completing its task by 14th millisecond. Now, we need to calculate the waiting time as usual. So, how long it was waiting? As per Gantt chart, we will be able to make up. P3 was waiting, was not waiting at all. It was waiting for 0 milliseconds. In the sense, it does not wait at all. So, P3's waiting time is 0. Now, P2's waiting time is 7 until P3 completes its job. And P1 was waiting till P3 to, to complete the job and P2 to complete the job. So, P3 plus P2 put together, P1 was waiting for 9 milliseconds to get the CPU. So, turnaround time, burst time plus waiting time. 5 plus 9 is equal to 14 and 2 plus 7, 9, 7 plus 0, 7. Similarly, we need to calculate average waiting time and average turnaround time as we have done earlier. Now, average waiting time is 5.3 millisecond and average turnaround time is equal to 10 millisecond as per this scheduling algorithm. Hope you have enjoyed this session and we will uh, see in the next video lecture about uh, some other uh, scheduling algorithm. Thank you.